We're getting her turned on. But I, I, we can move all this down. Hi. Stop looking at yourself over there now. It's really obvious. I can just see you looking at the screen. <laughs> That's <laughs> me. I don't, okay, I don't even know if I mean this sewing machine. Oh, I'm gross. Who we got? We got some people. And then just wrap having packing tape around my stomach. Stop looking at the screen. They all can see you do it now. Look at him. He stares at himself in that screen. Did they all see this pretty choo choo? This is where the people are. <laughs> I know, right? Look what Rachel's been making. Tracy and Christy started it out. Christy, Kathy, Kathy. Katie. Katie. I'm sorry, Katie. Wow. <laughs> Tracy and Katie. We've been moving heavy boxes all day. Isn't that pretty? Some of this is from France. Only the best. Only the best. Well, you can actually see the sparkles in the video. It's not a sleeve, though. Let's see. 13 people out of 19. Okay. Quite a few. Yeah. The shop is in its most disheveled space. space. It's actually kind of more organized, though, because it has boxes. Uh, Look at all that stuff. Oh my it's gosh. It's like four miles of saran wrap. How many boxes? Four Hundreds. Plastic tubs, we buy them out. Yeah, every time at Target, Travis we buy all the boxes. Every stock. <laughs> what are their names? Um, Beverly uh, Charmin and Lula Bell Cottonelle. They come from their toilet paper ARCs. Let's see, we're going to start on page, kind of. People like the tutu. Isn't it pretty? Isn't it pretty? It is pretty. We're going out of order in the book today. That shows up. I work right here and right here. I'm totally gonna knock the tripod down. Then I'll just go behind it when I need to go behind it. Travis's new phone. Got a new phone. 128 gigabytes. I'm almost out of room somehow. Are you? No, close. <laughs> I just, I don't know what I do. I put too many pictures on it. I save every voicemail and text message ever. I don't listen to them or respond, but I save them. A couple more people. How come it says one gone? What does that mean? Well, I'm not paying attention. Yeah, somebody's on Amazon. That's that is, right. No, we have three people not paying attention. So, right, we haven't started yet. We'll give everybody a couple more minutes. Do you push record on that? It's already recording on that. Oh, no. Okay. Why? Do you want to record on this one? No, it doesn't matter. Oh. No, recording, I'm so recording. gross looking. Ugh, no, don't look at me. The face of Halsey on stage. <laughs> Are you Mr. Hasley? Hasley, yeah. Travis Hasley. They call me Mrs. Hasley. We're married now. What did that guy say to us the other day? Happy Labor Day. Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Hall. Your wife. Your wife, yeah. <laughs> they called you my wife. Oh, it's so messy in here. We got a shelf at the new shop that's 10 feet wide, 10 feet tall, and 4 feet deep. And it will fit 70, 50 gallon Tupperware boxes. Ah, oh, I'm so excited. I'm <laughs> excited. Well, I think we should start since. Why does it say one gone? 
talking Come about? on, let's boost your attentiveness, people. Everybody close your other window. That's not what that one is. And go back. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, that's what that is. The little alert sign. Yeah. So there's one, two, three. <laughs> let's start. Should we we're start? Let me make sure nobody emailed saying they're having a problem, and then I'll start. I think you have all taken a webinar. Yeah, so is far. this anybody's like very first time at this? It shouldn't be because I think everybody took patterning one. But if not, you don't have a microphone turned on. You can type in any questions in the question section. Questions. And any questions after class, send to the Halsey on Stage Facebook page. Otherwise, Travis and I get bombarded at like 1 a.m. on our personal pages. <laughs> Because we're all in different time zones. Okay, we're ready to start, I think. You're ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, we're going to go over a few different types of collars today from the book. And then we are going to, um, we're going to make a, a fitted collar with a, any style line you want. And then I'm going to show you the idea behind making a rolled collar, like something that comes up along the neck and then lays down to the body of the garment. Then uh, we're going to chop up the mock-up that we've got on the size 6 dress form today. And I'm going to show you um, kind of the first time where you might combine uh, draping with flat patterning. So we're going to make a lady's jacket that has a lapel with a standing collar. And then we're going to draft a sleeve from the book. And then do you want to show this? Um, then we're going to just go through some different sleeves. So the sleeve on the, this sleeve here, the idea behind this we're going to go through is this sleeve right there on the dress form, this sleeve. And then, so that's kind of a restoration sleeve. And then we're going to do a Victo Edwardian kind of low bishop sleeve. So we're going to show you uh, the idea behind adding a cuff and fullness like that. And then I've done up also this really uh, more elaborate uh, Victorian sleeve, and I'm going to take you through the steps of that also. And then we will make a two-piece sleeve, which is more for like a man's jacket. And then help me not forget to show you how to put a gusset into the regular sleeve. So when we're done with sleeves, if I haven't shown you guys a gusset, somebody uh, send some emojis to Rachel, and we will do that. So let's get started with collars. Um, and there's more uh, that I sent you guys. There's more uh, words in here that we're going to go over. Um, but we're going to go over some of the basics in this section called collars, uh, just so that some of the words are familiar. And then the principle behind a couple different collars become familiar. Um, but after the ladies and men's body block, this is kind of like a a relaxing uh, class. Um, so the first thing we are going to do is I'm going to show you how to draft a collar that lays right next to the body so it doesn't travel up the neck. And then I'm going to show you the idea um, to make a collar, and their picture isn't very good, um, that stands up along the neck. So I'm going to just draw on the book. So I'm going to show you a flat collar like this. And then I'm going to show you a collar that comes higher up on the neck and lays down. So the first thing we're going to do is this flat collar. And then we're going to do a collar that has a roll line. And you'll see here it's describing a roll line. That's where it joins your neck or your facing and comes out. So we're going to start with a flat collar. And then we're going to make a collar that crawls up the neck. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Um, and we'll just make them. The shape's kind of simple. Like we don't need super elaborate shapes. So the first call, and then I'll show you how to make a stand collar too, like for a, a man's shirt or a mandarin collar. So if you look in the book on page 145, you'll see that all we're starting with is our body block. And I've just traced off the part that we need. So we've got our center front, our neck, our shoulder, and our front arm pole. And then in the back, we have our center back, our back neck, and our back arm pole. Uh, and what I did already is I went ahead and measured the front neckline and the back neckline. So later when we do our mandarin collar, I've already got the measurements done. So the first idea is so simple. If you want a collar that fits to the body, all you're going to do 
is kind of pencil on your collar shape. This one we're not even going to make in fabric because it's so straightforward. You just pencil on your collar shape and then clean it up uh, with a ruler. So I'm going to just clean up my curves here. Actually, I'll cut this out too so you can see all the, the three differences there. So if this was my collar that is just going to lay right flat to the garment, I want to make sure too that in the center back I've got a nice right angle there so I don't get weird things going on. Then we're just going to trace this off um, and we're going to cut that one out. And I'm just going to work on one side for the collars today. If you don't have this tracing wheel, for those of you in the USA, they've got it on Amazon now. Hey, suck that last time. I just really like to repeat myself, right? So actually, I can see these ones. I'm going to cut out my first collar. And we're going to look at all of them together. So this is going to be a really straightforward collar. This is just going to lie on the neck of our, our bodice and be nice and sweet, like, like a little Peter Pan collar. Now I'm going to show you how to take this exact same shape and make it stand up along the sides of the neck. So we're going to force a roll line into it. Um, so let's look at this one that I doodled here first. So if you think of this as a circumference, right, if you think of this outside edge as a length, uh, like a length in time, if we want the collar to get pushed up and lay towards our neck, all we have to do is reduce this circumference. So let's say from, from this point to this point is 10 inches. If we make it 8 inches, the collar can't lay this far out. It's going to scoot up her body, and then it will start to make a roll line. So let me show you um, kind of the idea behind that. So if I want my collar to finish around here, but I want it to have a roll to it, I'm actually going to start with a collar that sticks out a little bit further because when we shrink this edge in a minute, uh, it's going to lay higher up the neck. And that's something you just have to do a couple times to play with. So what I'm going to do first is I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also look at my, my block here and decide where do I want more of the collar to stand up? It's probably in the back. I want her collar to be higher at the back of her neck and then not too wild at the front. So when I add to my outside edge, I'm actually going to add more at the back and I'm going to do less going around to the front. And you'll see why here in a moment. So, And again, this is kind of one of those arbitrary things you've got to play with. So I'm going to add three quarters to my back about a half an inch to my shoulder. Then I'm going to kind of go three-eighths almost in the front and then a quarter towards the very front. And then I'm going to retake my curved ruler and I'm going to re... I don't have the best curve, but you know, we've been packing. So. The new shop is going to be so exciting. And we got amazingly fast, fancy fiber internet. So the next recordings we send from the new shop, once it gets hooked up, will be much, much better. So I'm going to cut this out, and we're not going to change the neck edge at all. So I'm going to just use my paper rotary cutter here and free this from the paper. And it actually, I'm going to write down what my front neck and back neck are for later when we do a different uh, mandarin collar. Okay, so now um, this edge, I'm not going to change at all because I need it to fit the neck edge of my body block or my lady's jacket or my blouse, whatever we're calling it. But what I want to do is I want to reduce this outside circumference. So instead of slashing and opening it, we're going to actually slash it and reduce it so that this outer edge of the collar has to crawl up her body. So I'm going to put just a bunch of slices across this sucker. I'm going to even go right across the shoulder. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the front. So you can see I've got all these slashes in my collar. We want to shrink this outside circumference now. 
and I want my collar to be less rolly in the front and more uh, rolled in the back. So my front couple slashes, I'm going to just overlap maybe like a quarter of an inch. And then as I work my way back, I'm going to overlap them more and more. So the more I overlap them, the higher the collar will be. So I did a quarter for the first two. I'm doing almost three-eighths for my next one. This is really cool. I think you'll see where you can use this in a lot of places. Now I'm overlapping almost a half an inch. So my neck edge is starting to flatten out. So uh, that's also a shape that will start to look familiar the more of this you do. So I'm overlapping even more. In my, my back slice, I'm going to overlap it almost like 5 eighths of an inch. So we went from this curve right here, there's our front and our back, to we totally changed this curve. And you can see here too, the more we go towards the back, the more dramatically we flattened out the curve. So now I'm going to cut this in some just blue taffeta. And if I was putting this, if I was putting either of these collars onto a garment, I would probably cut um, two fashions and one interfacing. And I usually interface the one that is hidden, the one that you can't see. Oh, here's a nice thing in my family. Okay. Just kind of quieten this out. Pretend I ironed it. Now, I'm going to just cut this shape out, and I'm just going to add, uh, I'm not going to add anything to the front edge, because we, we want to see where it actually hits the dress form, but I'm going to add about a half of an inch. Uh, well, I'm not going to add anything to the outside edge of the collar, but I'm going to add a half an inch to where it joins the neck. And in a second, we're going to look at this on the dress form. So this is going to be our collar that rolls, so I'm going to put an R on there our rolled collar. Then I'm going to cut out our flat one too, just so you can kind of see what happens between the two. Textile warehouse paper. It's stained, but it's cheap. And uh, if you've got questions as we're going, you know you can type them out. It must be Friday. Okay, so let's look at these two on the dress form over there. Rachel, grab the camera. So all I've got here is the ladies' uh, body block, one of them that we did last week. Yeah. In the book, there's an overlap of half inch at the arm and some other points that are moved to the flat collar. Do you ignore those steps? You can, if you want it to just lay flat, you can overlap a pinch at the shoulder, but you don't have to for it to lay totally flat. You just butt it together and draw around it, but you definitely can do exactly what it says in the book also. And what it shows that overlap in the shoulder will show up more on this rolled one. So first, let's put a flat one on here. And what I did is I measured... Uh, Let's see, I measured the neck from the dress form. So if I actually clip into my seam allowance, let me grab a little scissor. I'm going to take your scissors out of your drawer. I heard that. I heard that. So if I just put a couple clips into my seam allowance, and we're not going to sew this together, but we're just going to pretend it's sewn. Now I've got it laying absolutely flat. And the only thing that's standing up here is my seam allowance. Now, if we put the rolled one on, what's going to happen is it won't it won't lay flat at all at the neck. Oh yeah, here we'll zoom in. So, can you guys see what's happening now? Because we've shrunk this outside edge. The only way for this to fit into the garment is for it to have a roll. And I'll look here to make sure we can see that. Isn't that neat? So if we look at the back, it's standing up about an inch, inch and a quarter from the back of her neck. And then the roll line actually is getting smaller and smaller towards the front because we didn't overlap as much in the front. 
Isn't that cool? So that's really pretty. So actually, while we're here too, so I'm going to show you something cool with this. If I was going to make this, uh, and I want to be really gourmet with my construction, what I would do first is get it on a person or on the dress form and get it to roll really nice where it wants to roll. Then I would come in and I'm going to mark actually where it's rolling at. So I'm, I'm making sure that it's touching down onto my bodice or my coat or whatever it is. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to pencil in the roll because I'm interested in where that break point is uh, when it comes to interfacing and stuff. So now we can look at this back flat on the table here. That's going to be a back and forth. Oh. So this is our collar that's gonna that rolls no matter what we do. It's gonna stand up at the back because we shrank the circumference. Actually, it looks like a collar for a chicken nugget if you remember that. Do you remember that? Yeah. Right, a chicken <laughs> the chicken nuggets with had business collars from McDonald's. So if I was gonna make this collar now, and this we're gonna say this is my lining. I would interface my whole lining, right, with a light woven interfacing. Then I've got this line that's the standing up part of our collar. We just marked what's called the roll line. So if I want this to stay just beautiful for a long time, I'd interface the whole piece. Then I would take a, a, a stiffer interfacing or two layers of the same interfacing, and then I would interface just the part uh, below my roll line so that my, my uh, collar always breaks at the same spot. So we're forcing the roll line. Does that make sense, what I just described? Neat, neat, neat. Someone send Rachel a thumbs up. Who's texting me? I don't know what's going on. Carla wants to know if I want to go to Walmart. Oh. So, okay, did somebody give you a thumbs up? We'll yes. move on. Thumbs so, up. so right. that's really cool. So, if you just think about um, this idea, you can apply this to a sleeve or the side of some exotic pants or whatever. So, all we did is we took our original circumference, even though it's not a complete circle, we thought about this as circumference on our body black. And the more and more we take away, the higher the roll line will get. So if we took away even more, our roll line would start to move up to here. So that's, that's a collar with a slight stand or a slight roll. And it's a stand without it being a separate piece. So now we're going to just really quickly do um, this rippled uh, collar in figure 494. So I'm going to just take the same shape. They have it going all the way around, but I'm going to just show you this quickly. So here's our shoulder. If you, so now we're just going to do the opposite. So we're going to just slice into this sucker and open it up. And if you want to be fancier with it, you can make the back more open than the front. So I'm going to put a little ripple. And you can put, you can put a slice, as many slices as you want. There's no real rule for that. But they don't have to be super duper far apart. So I'm going to just keep opening more. Actually, you'll see that it reaches a point where you can't where you can't go beyond without adding the seam, you know, where the collar starts to run into itself again. But so this, if you think the neck about the neck edge of this, that could be the inseam of a pair of pants. And you can slice a pair of pants and open up the outseam uh, into a spiral. Uh, to make all sorts of really cool, like Scheherazade or harem pants or any number of things. I think salwar is the type of pants, it would be. but I don't know. Um, so I'm going to cut this out really quick. And why I'm just doing a half a collar again. So you would read, oh, I didn't tape it well enough. Or good enough. I didn't tape well. it well enough. I'm learning the difference between well and good. I still don't get it, but I'm trying. So 
So this would, this would be really cute on a kid's costume or for a clown. I'm going to say my grain line is going to go down the same bag. Grain lines, right? That's something, too, to just kind of experiment with a little bit. Symmetrical grain lines for something like this is good. So if you put the shoulder on the fold, or the shoulder on the straight of grain on one side, you'd obviously put it on the straight of grain. So this will look familiar too when we do the sleeve. Look, it looks like one of those like perfect ratio curve things. What's that called? Golden ratio. The golden ratio collar here. So now I'll put this one back on our girl. I almost stepped on the bow. Don't step on the bow. I know, don't step on the bow. I'll put it on this side. Does that side show better? So you can control the fullness. The more you open it up, the more fullness and kind of ruffle or ripple you will get. So there's, there's kind of a clowny, standy, uppy color. So if you want it fuller, spread it out more, but you might have to add a seam. And actually, this taffeta doesn't lay down just amazingly well, but if I steamed it, it would. So that's kind of what they're showing in figure 494, even though my fabric is kind of out of control. So there's that. So let's make a standing collar now. And we are going to use page. Do, 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 do. So these next couple pages just go on to show more of this stuff, even though it's not like really in the same order. Um, you can see here's where they slash and spread to do this great big full collar, but really too, um, you can also think about wherever wherever you've opened it up, that's where your ripple or your fullness will lay. So if you want lots of fullness, you would slash this more and open it up where here, uh, in this drawing, they've showed all these nice even ripples, but this is really going to give you just a couple big ripples. So if that, that sh that sh hopefully uh, makes sense. And then here's where they showed the overlap one to get the collar to stand up with a roll line. And they, in this picture, they overlapped it in three spots evenly. From doing this a lot and knowing what looks nice on the body, I know that I like to overlap more at the back and then less at the front. So let's do making a collar stand, uh, step one on page 148. So what I need to know is, let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this, rid of this. I need to know the height of my collar and what is my neck. Um, and it's best if you know what your front neck is and what your back neck is. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say my collar is going to be an inch and a half tall. And I know my front neck is five and a half. So I'm going to say my front neck is five and a half. My back neck is three. And my collar height, my chuh, my collar height is an inch and a half. And this, this, these are great directions for a man, a woman, and a kid. And it, this same curve kind of works on everybody. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, a horizontal line that's equal to half of the neck. So I'm going to add my front neck to my back neck. So it's going to be eight and a half. And the height of it is going to be how tall do I want my collar plus an inch? So my rectangle is going to be eight and a half inches long. This is Rick's roller. And it's going to be two and a half inches tall because I'm taking the height of my neck plus an inch. Use your ruler because it's got nice right angles. Okay, the next thing we are going to do is we're going to locate point E, which is an inch up from the bottom right. So that's going to be point E. And then we are going to locate point F, which is three quarters of an inch over from the top right. And we're going to connect E to F with a straight line. And 
now um, we are going to connect, uh, we're going to mark point G, which is the height of our collar up from the, from the leftmost line. And all this stuff is in the book too, so you can reread all of this. Now we're going to connect G to F with a slight curve and C to E with a curve. And this is the groundwork for a Mandarin style collar. And, and the more curved rulers you have, the more the more curved rulers you have. So the left side of this is the center back, and the right is the center front. So this, if we just cut this guy out, that is a Mandarin collar uh, that would assume the center front is on the fold. You'd have to add whatever seam allowance in the back if it's closing up the back. So if we look at this little guy, you'll see that the front when you just bend it around, your front ends up lower than the back, just like it would on a, in a neck hole. The front is down a little bit. So now, if you're in a fitting, and this edge is standing away from your performer's neck, all you've got to do in your fitting is just take little, a few little tucks out of the top edge until it lies against the neck. So you might not be changing the bottom edge at all. It just means that the shape of your person's neck uh, is a little thinner and you've just got to adjust it so you would just take those little tucks in and then take a nice curved ruler and redraw that same thing but so that's kind of the basic uh, to make a stand collar now if you were going to make a mandarin collar out of this you just decide what shape you want in the front of your mandarin collar and draw it on so this collars are pretty easy so if I was to make a mandarin collar I would just Put, oh, sorry, I'm not paying attention where I am. Uh, just draw the shape of your mandarin collar on. Now, it goes on to show you um, to make a man's shirt collar, and I'll show that here on the paper, too. So, a man's shirt collar has a stand um, underneath it that raises the collar up, and we're going to just use this same base pattern, and we're going to say it's my collar stand. So, um, what it has you do is you take your base pattern, And I'm just going to basically repeat what's in the diagram in the book. So I know this is my center front, right? So now I've got nothing that can overlap to, to close underneath my collar. So what you're, what you're going to do is you're going to add a button lap on. Just do it with the ruler. Make it look nice. So I'm going to add a button lap on. So when my collar is, this is real 70s looking. So when my collar is buttoned, this line is my center front. This line should be meeting on my over collar and my under collar. And then this space over here is what's surpassing the edge of the collar. Then um, you're just going to take your ruler uh, and draw the rest of the over collar on. So I'm going to I'm going to make mine really really kind of sexy. So I'm going to say this is my over collar. It's going to have a great big point in the front, and then it's just going to go straight around to the back. So now you've got this. So now we're going to actually cut out uh, our over collar because we need those two pattern pieces. And because I'm going to make my life really easy, I'm going to give myself a notch somewhere so that I've got something to match up later on. So now we cut this out. Uh, collars, right? So any shape you want, uh, you can turn into a collar. Same thing. So let's say you made this, and the bottom edge of this is standing too far away from your body in your mock-up. All you're going to do is fold out just from the bottom edge, but you might not adjust the neck edge at all. That's why fittings are a really, really good thing. Okay. So there's my, my over collar, which I got my notch, and I'm going to cut that on the fold. 
And then let's cut out my under collar. Or the collar stand. This would be your collar stand. This is a really tall collar. He's going to go do roller disco, I think. With the Charmaine sister. Charmaine sister. I can't get it right. So now that's the mechanics of that. So when you put that around, oh, so when you put that around the neck, now we have a standing collar uh, with a turned down collar, like a man's shirt collar. So that makes our nice standing collar. Just another day watching me cut up brown paper. So that's that's the idea behind that, and you can play with that more. Now we're going to go to the dress form, and I'm going to show you kind of where you need to mess with a little draping if you want to make a, like a suit collar. So let me, all I'm going to do is take a piece of this blue stuff, because the blue, the blue shows up pretty good on there, right? The blue. How would you interface that collar? If I, oh, I just crumpled it up and threw it away. Um, I would, let's see, I would interface the parts of it that are underneath. Did I throw it all away? So I would interface the part of this that isn't showing to the audience. I would interface the back side of it. So you're going to interface the back side of this. And then your other collar, the part that's going to fold down and be hidden, I would interface that side so that on your outside always you have a piece of uninterfaced fabric. Because um, if anything shrinks in your interfacing or you get bubbles, you don't want the bubbles to show on, on, the, on the audience side or the good side. I threw it away too quick. Now I'm going to just cut up a piece of the same blue stuff. And we're going to make kind of like a suit collar where our collar gets hooked into a lapel. And I'm going to start with a big old wide piece that's on the bias because we need some bias to, to bend around the neck. Shouldn't have packed up the iron. So okay, so let's go. So this isn't in the book, but I want to show you this because it will arise. This, this requirement will come up. So I have got my my lady's body block here. I know. I I wonder if the weather is messing with it. Our quality isn't great for some reason right now, but it's good there. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, we'll send everybody the next time we do the same class. We'll also send you the recording. Uh, and at the new shop, we do have much, much, much better internet. Fiber. Fiber, the fastest that they have in Chicago. So. What I want to end up with here is a standing collar that has a lapel on the bodice. So I'm going to just cut up part of my bodice to show you kind of the idea behind making the lapel. There's, there have been a bunch. We had flooding all day yesterday, so I have a feeling that's... Two days. Two days. We had two days of flooding and emergency alerts, all kinds of stuff. Not on us. No, but just outside of our zip code is underwater. Um, so what I've got here is just my um, my muslin shell, and I'm going to turn this into a lapel. So I know where my center front is, so I'm going to mark my center front again really well. So I'm marking my center front, and then, uh, actually I'm going to mark it all the way down to her waist. Then I'm going to decide, does my jacket overlap and button, or does it just meet in the front? I'm going to say it overlaps and buttons. So then I'm also going to mark in kind of where I think the overlap is, so I know where my lapel needs to start from. Then, from where that overlap point is, I can bend uh, the rest of my muslin in any, any shape I want to make a lapel. Does that kind of show? That kind of shows. So I'm going to just say, I'm going to let it lay where it wants to lay the easiest for now. So I'm going to pin my over and under lap to the dress form or to the human if you're working on a human. Just pin it on them. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to actually finish drawing the shape of my, my lapel. So I'm going to say I want this real noticeable lapel here. 
and I'm going to do a lapel with a notch. So I'm going to stop my collar right there. And that shows. So now what I'm going to do, so this is great. We're going to do a little bit of draping to figure out how this collar actually works. So I'm going to first, so I took a piece of bias because a collar like this is usually cut on the bias on a man's suit. I'm going to start with my piece of bias at the back of the neck, and I'm going to pin it together where it's going to be sewn. So I'm going to just pin this piece of bias to the right to the back of my bodice or my jacket. Then I'm going to figure out how high do I want this collar to be, how high up from the neck is it going to be, and I'm going to tentatively put a little pin in there that we might need later. So I'm going to say I want the back of this to be about two inches high. So now we're starting to build a collar that's going to join to our lapel. So the challenge now is you're going to bend your bias and you're going to follow the stitching line uh, of the back of your bodice or the back of your jacket and then you're going to start curving it around until where you want it to join the lapel and then and then you're going to see if you're happy with it. So all these pins we might move. So I'm, I've got a big old piece of bias and I'm working right on the stitching line of my um, under, under outfit. So I'm just pinning it together. And as you work around, you can keep looking to see, are you getting, so this will start to look kind of like that rolled collar we did earlier. So I'm starting to look at the angle down from the neck and seeing if it relates to my lapel and if it looks good. So, um, so you can mess with that. The more, the more you look at it, the more you see what you're doing, the more, uh, the more better it will be. Be aware of what you're working on, right? So now, so now I'm going to say, I'm actually kind of surprised that it worked that well. So I have a nice relation going from the part of my collar that's going to be rolled down to my lapel. So I'm going to also, like we did earlier, I'm going to mark that roll to where it joins my lapel. So I'm marking my roll line. Don't mark it with a sharpie. Actually, if you're just draping it, mark it with a sharpie. It's easier to see. Now I'm going to also mark the center back of my collar. So I'm going to pencil in the center back. Now I'm going to clip into this a little bit um, to see what, what it actually looks like. Or I want to see that it's actually fitting to the bodice. So I'm going to figure out like where's the primo spot to end the edges of my collar. And you just kind of keep looking at it. So now I'm going to pencil in where the edge of my collar is because I want it to actually touch her body. So this is an advanced stuff, but you guys can handle it. So now I, I can see where the edge of my lapel is, right? So then I can just make whatever shape, if I want a notch in my collar, right? Does that show? You can see that on both screens. Mm -hmm. yeah, I am. Oh, sorry about the quality, guys. Yeah, on one of our computers, it looks like it's streaming very clear. And on our other computer, it looks like it's streaming not so clear. So hopefully it's not terrible. So what, what I did, let's review. I found the center front of my garment. I marked where my button lap is. Then I fold it over any lapel shape I want. So you, this fold that's here, you could put this anywhere you want to. You can change where this front fold is. Then I took a piece of bias, and I worked it around the stitching line of my neck. So I'm actually going to draw my stitching line on, too, on my piece of bias. And I'm going to put a notch where my shoulder seam is. And I'm going to just keep matching the stitching line. So now we have this beautiful collar that actually really, really nice. And I'm going to take this off the dress form and we'll look at what that piece looks like flat on the table. Before we move on to sleeves. 
Did anybody comment if it's completely horrible on their end? Let us know. Is it completely horrible on your end of the video? Oh, really? Yeah, everyone says it's horrible. 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 But That's funny. For some people, it's all right. And some people, it's terrible. I wonder if we should reconnect to the Internet. No, and keep going. Off. Will it kick everybody off? It'll kick the whole thing. Um, but our recording is going to yeah, be fine. Yeah, the recording is better. The recording is really clear. It's so just what this so just hang with us today, and because that's the recording yeah. that they'll get, right? We saved that from the computer. So, uh, and if the recording, the recording should be clear it's with what we're screen. seeing on our end. Um, and also, when we teach this class the second time, we'll send it. I think it's this weather we've had is what's causing the problem. Uh, yeah. It's like half and half. It's so weird. I think it's just our signal and the terrible storms we've had. I apologize. I apologize. Um, cool. Cool. So, so we're going to keep going, um, but the video should be better because that's the video that So the caller can be a part of the bodice block and not in the piece. The lapel. the lapel, yeah. So here, if we look at this here on the table, actually, I'm going to rip apart my shoulder. I'm going <laughs> to, I really ripped it good. I'm going to take my shoulder off so we can actually, uh, would you hand me one of the Sharpies? Yeah, sorry that it's not clear for I some of you guys. I think the reverb on audio on there should be because all sounds turned up, so it's. Yeah, I think we're. I think the horrible storms we had are not helping us out. So if we look at our block, what I've got here is my center front. I figured out. I sorted out where my center front is. Right. Then I added a little bit so that I have an over and under lap. So we need somewhere for buttons to go. We need somewhere for buttons to go. Then, when we were on the dress form, what I ended up doing was folding this until uh, I had a nice angle that I liked. So you could do this, you could do part of this in paper until you have to drape it, but to get this kind of a collar, part of it you're just going to have to drape. But if I was just in paper, I could decide where I would want my lapel to fold to. And you could mark that in paper. And then create this shape. So remember, we, we created this shape on the dress form. But you can also create this shape um, flat on the paper and then use the dress form to figure out how to put your over collar in. But for folks that have sewn men's jackets, if anybody's made a man's blazer, this shape should kind of start to look familiar. So you could also, in your uh, get a, there's a couple different tailoring books. I'll look up the one that I, I, I use. I can't think of the name of it. It has a green cover. Um, we'll post a picture of that too, which shows some really great tricks you can do with this kind of stuff. But then what we figured out on the dress form was my collar stand. So we marked the center back of our collar. And I'm going to just clean it up here on my piece of fabric. Then this edge down here that's got this weird curve in it, this is when I followed along the stitching line to join it to my bodice. So that should look kind of familiar too to folks that have made some men's wear. Then there's where the notch on my lapel happens. And I would just take a ruler and true that up. So um, you could interface this similarly because it has a roll line. So you could interface the whole under collar. And you could take even hair cloth or Taylor's Pride or that, that gray and white flecked canvas. Everybody calls it something different. And I would stitch that to my under collar so that I have a really nice roll and something that holds my collar up when it's actually put together. Um, let me cut this out. Chicken nugget in a cake, right? I hope somebody else gets that reference other than just us. The nuggets, the, the, the business It was nuggets. probably advertised to our demographic. Yeah, our age. So now, this is just half of it, but now we would have this collar that stands up like that. 
Does that show or do I need to go back to the dresser? That shows. Everybody, does everybody kind of get what that was? This is one of those things that if you're going to do it, you have to monkey with it and know that, like, the first time it might not work out as great as you want. That's why you got practice. Yeah? Good? Cool. Let's move on to sleeves. Well, it looks clearer now on that computer. Uh, sorry, folks. It's the storm. Um, the storms. It's not storming now, but we had storms. Let me get a fresh piece of paper, and we're going to go through the sleeve block and then modifications to it. Ooh, and we'll put a gusset in there because everybody needs to know to know that. Okay, so I probably threw away. Oh, I've got. Okay, we should actually look at the dress from what I measured here. Um, let me get the book to the right page first. And if anybody that doesn't have a book didn't get the, the thing I emailed today, just let Rachel know and she'll write your name down. <laughs> we are going to start on page 136. And here's the measurements that we need to know. And I just tied an arm on our size 6 dress form, and that's what we're going to use today. So the measurements that it asks for is the shoulder to wrist. And I like to go right from where there's kind of like, there's a little, the edge of this bone at the top of your shoulder is where I like to go from. And on a human, I make them pretend they're holding a beach ball so that their arm is longer. But uh, she can't do that. So we're going to say our shoulder to wrist on my girl's 23. Then it wants to know the underarm to wrist. And you can have them bend their arm a little bit too. But it's that the underarm to wrist is helping us figure out how high the cap of the sleeve is. So I'm going to go from my underarm, not me on the girl, I'm going to go from my underarm also down to the wrist so that we can see what the difference is to come up with the height of our cap. Um, and on dance clothes, if you do this a little bit tight in their arm, you'll come up with uh, more movement in the sleeve and the gusset that we're going to show you. So my underarm to wrist is 17. Then I need to know uh, my underarm to elbow also. So I'm going to go from the underarm to the elbow. And mine, it's about eight both ways. From my wrist to my elbow, or well, my wrist to my elbow is about nine. And my underarm to my elbow is eight. And we just need to know the underarm to elbow. Then we need to know the arm side. And that's how much cap do we need to make a fitted sleeve. So the arm side is uh, under the armpit up the front, around the back, over the shoulder, and then connect your tape. And my arm's eye is 17 on this girl. Um, so let's draft a sleeve. Okay, so this is going to look familiar to also to doing the ladies or the men's body block. We're going to start with how tall does our box need to be and how wide does it need to be. So the height of our box, so our, our A to B and our C to D is going to be the shoulder to the wrist. And then the width of our box, um, the A to C and B to D, uh, is going to be your arm's eye measurement minus three inches. And actually, um, this works great for women of any height and men of any height. When I'm doing this for a child, like a kid kid, I only take away about two inches uh, and maybe two and a half inches for a preteen. So pretty much everybody to get the width of this box, you're going to take the arms I minus three. But if they're itty bitty, you can take the arms I minus two and a half or minus, minus two. Um, so let's make a box. Do you measure the arms eye with fingers under the tape? Uh, yeah, I, I usually put two fingers under the tape measure. Good question. Whose question was that? Just mouth it to me because we can't say names. That's a good question. Um, yeah, like putting a saddle on a horse. You need to give them a little bit of room in there. Oh, that didn't work out. Um, so my shoulder to wrist shoulder is 23. Is 23. So I'm going to measure 23 inches. Huh? Make a line. 
and my arm side is 17, so 17 minus the 3 inches, because the book tells us 2 is, is 14. So I'm going to make a box that's 14 inches wide by 23 inches tall. That's good. My ruler only goes 24. I think we'll even be able to to put the recording in Dropbox if we need to. Oh, look, I only went 22 on this side. 23 tall and 14 across. And then just like a lot of this stuff, uh, it's going to start to sound familiar. It wants us to divide it uh, exactly in half. So we're going to just go 7 inches over and divide it vertically in half. So we have our initial construction lines. Um, the next spot, so I'll put in some of these letters, A, E, C, B, F, D. Oh, you could turn that into something. Oh, that's, that's funny. B, F, D. Pretty good. Big friendly deal. Um, big so friendly. the big friendly <laughs> John. No. <laughs> that's only on my big for yeah. Sorry, it's Friday. We're punchy. Um, I hope you're punchy too. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is figure out where the bicep line is and where the elbow line is. So the bicep line, that's where we're gonna use our underarm to wrist measurement, and we're gonna go up from the bottom. So this I would say this is the underarm seam of your sleeve. So I'm my underarm to wrist is 17. So I'm going to go 17 up from the bottom, and then I am going to go, uh, we also know the underarm to elbow. We know how far down from the armpit to the elbow it was, and that was 8, so that's going to be my next line. I'm going to go down, so here is our armpit. This They call it the bicep line. It's really, to me, it's the armpit, but, you know. The dogs are being good. Maybe I shouldn't have said napping. anything. They're napping. They were wild yeah, earlier. Basil was hiding in a tin cabinet earlier. Anything that Rachel empties, Basil goes and takes a nap inside of it. <laughs> so we've got the bicep and the elbow. Okay, okay. Let's see. Um, then on the wrist edge, it has you put in these next two points right away, points K and L, and they're an inch and a half in... Um, from your, your outermost lines on the bottom. So down here is going to be our wrist, up there is going to be the cap. We're going an inch and a half on each of those spots. And then um, we are going to connect K and L, K and L, up to this line that they're calling the bicep line. But to me it's the armpit, but you know. So now we don't have a fitted sleeve yet, but we're getting a sleeve block. And actually, the next thing you can do, um, in some books they call this kiting a sleeve. We're going to connect the outsides of our bicep line up to the shoulder, up to point E, just with a straight line first. And then we're going to put in construction lines to make the actual cap of a sleeve. And there's different ways to do this. This is just one of them. Um, but it works very good, which is why we're showing you this one. Now, let me make sure I haven't missed anything. Connect uh, E to G and H to G. So this is G and H with a straight line. So we've made this kite shape. Um, now, what we're going to do is divide this bicep line into six, or we're going to divide each side into thirds. Uh, and kind of like we did with something the other day, but I don't remember what it was. We're just going to take a piece of paper, and I'm going to mark on my strip of paper what half of this space is. So I'm marking out half, uh, half of my whole width, and I'm going to cut out my little strip of paper. This is also a good way to mark buttons on a man's shirt, or bars on a choo-choo, or brownies if you're you know, cutting brownies. So now we know this width. Instead of doing that weird math, we're just going to fold our strip of paper into thirds. One, two, three. 
and we're going to divide that space into thirds. So I just used my little strip to do the math for me. But I'm sure many of you are much better at math than I am. Now we're going to go up. So you can just take a faint line or a nice thick line and you're going to go up from that point. Okay, now this next spot, so we're looking on page 137, and I'm looking uh, in the left column where it says A, B, C, D. These, uh, uh, this is kind of like your next set of just because measurements, and I pretty much don't change these measurements, again, unless it's for like a little, little kid. Um, so A, A and B, where it has you go below three quarters of an inch, B, you go up three quarters of an inch. I, if this was a child, like anybody under 4'6", is that pretty short, 4'6"? Yeah, if they're under 4'6", change this to a half an inch instead of three quarters of an inch. And if they're under 4'6", change step C to three quarters of an inch instead of an inch. And this, uh, it really helps to look at this little part of the diagram on the top right of the column. So A, I'm going to go on my line that's like the top of a kite. On the first line, I'm going to mark uh, point M, three quarters of an inch below where that kite line intersects. I'm going to mark point N, three quarters of an inch above. That's N. And then um, we're going to skip over the shoulder. So E is your shoulder. The very top of that is your shoulder. Um, then we're going to mark point O an inch up from where it intersects on this line. And then the next point, point so this is M N O P. When I was little I thought L M N O was just one letter. Me too. I, I took a lot of <laughs> a lot of speech therapy to fix that. Um, so so now we've got these different points. So point P is actually right there where this intersects. So M is three quarters below. N is three quarters above. The reason why O is an inch above is that makes the back cap of the sleeve just a little bit higher and it gives the person a little bit more room uh, to move their arm. Um, so you, if you want even a little more room in your sleeve, you could play with raising O up even like an inch and a quarter would give you more movement at the back of the sleeve. You know, the only good thing about the recording looking fuzzy right now is is you can't see how bad I hit it out from moving boxes It's pretty bad. It's it's pretty bad. bad. It'll show, though, in the better quality that we'll send you. So now, with your curved ruler, and actually, I know this one, this works better for my arm. Um, you're going to try to connect M, N, and E kind of with the same curve, but if, if you can't, don't worry about it, you can eyeball it. So I'm going to connect M, N, and E, and then I'm going to connect E, O, and P. I'm going to just flip my ruler and bend it. Now, if you can get really close to those points, but not exactly, you'll be just fine. But definitely make sure that O is a little bit higher. Um, so I've got the cap, and you can see here too, this space right here is shorter than the space over here. So we want that to be higher because that gives her more room, uh, it gives them more room in the back. So now we're going to do the armpit. So I started with my ruler this way. All we're going to do is flip it the other direction, and that will just blend. So it's the opposite part of the curve will just blend right into there. So now we have the cap. Does anybody have any questions? about what they saw or heard about for this this last part, just making the cap. And then we'll go forward to messing a little bit with the wrist. And then we're going to put a gusset on here, which I know everybody will like. We're good. We're good. Cool. You guys are fantastic. OK, so now um, we're going to put an opening in the sleeve. And the nice place to put an opening is at the back of the wrist. Uh, every now and then you'll see a sleeve or uh, something on a performer and you'll think it'll look kind of weird. If you put the opening underneath the wrist at the underarm seam, 
for some reason our brains are just conditioned to think that that doesn't look right and that the right spot for an opening to be is at the back of the wrist instead of on the underside of the arm. And uh, if you haven't figured it out already, the left side of this is the front and the right side is the back, just opposite of the body block. I don't know why. Um, so to figure out where this slit is going to be, we just are going to divide the wrist in half. And my girl's wrist, I'm going to say, is seven inches. So I'm going to go over three and a half inches and about three or four inches up. And this would be where I would put the placket or any kind of opening. So if I'm going to put any opening in my sleeve, it's going to be right there. I think about how to spell opening. It's a struggle. Poor Rachel puts up with a lot. So there's the basic sleeve block. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to put a gusset in this. And then we're going to talk about making this fit the wrist, turning it into a two-piece sleeve. And then I'm going to show you the development for um, We pick Victorian sleeves because it's more elaborate and you can see more stuff. Um, so here we go. Everybody ready for gussets? Actually, let's mark a few more things on this um, that are described in the book. Uh, you may have heard me at different times refer to balance points. The balance points are the parts on a sleeve where the underarm remains flat. So if you have a gathered sleeve and the overarm uh, has ease or gathering to it. Now, if I wanted to fit my sleeve, into my body block, right? So I don't know, I didn't draw my whole front armhole. But if this is my front armhole, and somewhere here is my back armhole, now would be the time where I'm actually going to measure the entire cap of my sleeve. I would measure my front and take a note of that. Then I would measure the back of my sleeve cap and write those numbers down. Generally, you want the front cap of the sleeve to be like 3 quarters of an inch or a full inch more, you want more sleeve than armhole, right? So you should be able to ease the excess in your sleeve into the front. And then in the back of your sleeve, you usually want like an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half of ease. So, so when we say ease, that means that your sewing technician job is to fit the back of the sleeve and fit the front of the sleeve into the armhole, pucker free. Um, so you would put gathering stitches in it, but when you sew it, you want all the fibers to lay down and not have any puckers, or what I like to call chucky puckers. Um, it's a good word, right? I'm sure everybody knows. If I say, get the tucky bucket out, you know what I mean. So now, okay, so let's talk about balance points. The front balance point is where um, this curve, the curve of your cap, intersects the straight line between M and M. So I'm going to put a single notch there. So my front balance point is where the curve of my cap hits the straight line between points M and M, M and M and N. And the back balance point is right at P. So where P is, is going to be the back balance point. So I'm going to put two big old notches in there so I know that's the back a big old notch there and a big old notch so we know that's the shoulder. Um, so in the garment, this should be flat from here to here and this should be flat. And then if there's ease, it should happen here. And in a fitted sleeve, there should be some ease. Now let's say that you measured your sleeve and it's smaller than your armhole. That's an indication that you either need to make your armhole a little bit bigger or make your sleeve a little bit bigger. So if the, let's say the front and back of my sleeve cap were smaller than my armhole, I would just slip this from the bottom up. I would just put a cut from the bottom all the way up and open it until I've got that. I would open it up until I've got that ease that I need. Um, Rachel, will you see if there's a flexible ruler over there? Rachel's going to get a flexible ruler, and we're going to put a gusset in this. Um, this. This is a really good thing to know. Um, if the gus, if gusset's a new word for you, it's the chunk of fabric or the space under an armpit um, that helps the performer raise their arm without their garment climbing up their body. 
So here's, um, and the book does, it might not be in the pages I gave you, but if you've got the book in front of you, um, no, I don't think it does. It does somewhere. Somewhere in this book it shows you how to put in a football-shaped gusset, which we don't really care for because it's hard to sew. Um, if you can't find one, that's all right. Oh, okay. So to, to start putting the gusset in, I'm going to come up. Uh, so my front balance point is higher than my back balance point. So I want to make a, a horizontal line from the bi above the bicep that splits the difference. Oh, thank you. So my front balance point is about three inches above the bicep line, and my back balance point is only two inches above the bicep line. So we're going to put in a new line that's not in the book, and I'm going to split the difference. So this space was three inches. This space is two inches. So the middle of that, that's an easy one, is two and a half. So I'm going to start by putting in a line that's two and a half inches up from my bicep or up from the armpit. And that's the height of gusset that we want to end up with. Um, and I don't know really where I came up with this other than I've done it for a while and it seems to work really, really well. Uh, and then this, this splitting the difference in height between your balance point works out for a shorter cap or a taller cap. Like it just gives you the right height of gusset um, through fairy dust and imagination. Now I have a flexible ruler and I want to measure from my balance point to my underarm uh, and we're going to start on the front side. So I'm going to put the zero of my flexi rule on the balance point. And the weird thing with these flexible rulers is zero isn't at the end, so you actually have to make sure you're finding zero. You made that mistake. We worked with a lady at Houston that everything was a little bit too small that she did no matter what. And we, after like two years, we found out that she was missing a quarter inch on the zero side of her ruler. So on a she, ruler makes all sense. Yeah, on a ruler. She, but it was a perfect cut. Like it was like her ruler was printed wrong. So everything she did was always the flexing when I get it, a little small. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was a goofball. You met her. Oh. <laughs> I bet you can imagine who it was. So, uh, but she's a sweetie. Um, okay, so I'm putting the zero of my flexible ruler on my front balance point, and then I'm actually the next thing I need to do is measure how long it is from there to the bottom of my armpit in the front, and it's like four and five eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna bend my flexible ruler up to that line, and I need to mark where four did I say four and five eighths where four and five eighths of an inch is. So this is how far out my gusset has to be. I've seen some explanation where people say to just raise the armpit straight up, to go straight up from the armpit. But then what happens is you're stealing from the cap of your sleeve, and usually your sleeve ends up too small. So we have to keep this distance from here to here, and we're going to bend it up to there. And a gusset is shaped kind of like a, like a sad semi-deflated football. I don't know what this shape is, but there's kind of the gusset shape. Now I'm going to blend, so now this is further out than my, the under seam of my sleeve, so I'm going to take a curved ruler now and I'm going to blend the outer part of my gusset. Got light bulbs, Got light bulbs huh? Good, good. Even if you can't see me clear today, we still, we still got light bulbs. This patterning with Helen Keller. Or would it be Anne Frank? Somebody. Anne Frank? No. <laughs> Annie <laughs> Sullivan. Anne Frank. Yes, I know who Anne Frank is. Sorry, Anne Frank. Well, I think Anne would have Your face too. is red. <laughs> My face <laughs> never changed red. Patterning with Helen Keller and Annie Sullivan. That's what I meant to say. So now we're going to do the same thing in the back. I'm, but I'm starting on my balance point. So I'm going to measure from my back balance point to my underarm. That looks good. I'm in. It's entertaining. Now I'm going to, so it's three inches, so it's a shorter distance. So I'm going to bend my flexi ruler up into whatever this gussety shape is. And 
mark my three inches and blend that into there. So gusset is really just raising the, the armpit. The higher the armpit is, the higher they can raise their arm without it monkeying with the rest of their costume. Now I'll try to poorly draw the other gusset scenario. So the other way is a sewing gusset. So you have you have the cap of your sleeve, right, like this. Then you cut just a football shape. Actually, you would cut it with a bias for this. And you just cut a football shape or a lemon shape like that. And then you would sew that right in to your underarm. So, so that's a sewn-in gusset. But what's a headache is getting this intersection to work. And having worn enough sewn-in gussets on stage myself, this seam in the sewn in gusset will drive you absolutely crazy. Um, so let's turn this now uh, into a two piece sleeve um, and then we're going to mess with it. So have I lost anybody? Everybody's got gusset or do we need to review any gusset stuff? <laughs> the dogs are awake. So that's a gusset. So now let's look at this again. Um, where I built my gusset in, the more you soften this curve, the more movement they have in their arm. So, so you can even give them more movement by just softening up the curve on both sides. Will let them raise their arm even more. But if your if your measurements are good, they should be able to put this arm straight up in the air and not have their their garment raise up and down at all. Um, fitted sleeve. So let's look next. Okay, we're going to look at page 138 and we're going to just kind of pencil on sleeve development one, but I'm going to show you some different stuff. Um, just kind of look where it says sleeve development one. What it's having you do is put a, a big dart in the underarm of this sleeve. That, that I think that shows. So this first sleeve development, and you can read this and play with it too, it's having you put a dart uh, into the underarm of the sleeve behind the back of the elbow so that um, the wrist is more fitted. Now generally for fashion and theatrical stuff, that would be like a style choice if you want that dart there. The nice thing about this dart is it makes a quick fitted sleeve that fits at the wrist and it also leaves you enough room at the elbow and across the bicep uh, for people to move. But I'm going to show you the way I make a two-piece sleeve um, for like a man or a woman's jacket. Uh, and then um, this other development will start to look familiar uh, when I go through showing you the sleeves we're going to show you for today. So we're going to start by making a two-piece sleeve. Um, so here we go. So if you look at 142, they're making a two-piece sleeve it's not very fitted at the wrist. So if, uh, do you guys have one page 142? Somebody let me know if that came in the printout. If not, if not, I won't talk about page 142. Does somebody have page yes. 142? You do. Okay. So if you look at page 142 um, and look at that top diagram, they haven't made the sleeve fit towards the wrist in any way at all. So if I just made this, my wrist uh, the, I just measure the bottom of my lady's sleeve. The wrist is going to be 11 inches, which is really more like for a man suit sleeve. Like you can see how loose on my wrist 11 inches is. So I'm going to show you one way to reduce the wrist a little bit. Um, and we're going to say that we want to reduce our lady's sleeve to nine, a 9 inch opening so she can still get her hand out. Uh, in the white thing. So we're going to cut this out and turn this into a two piece sleeve. I've got tape, I've got a rotary cutter. Oh, we're going to do a two-piece sleeve with a gusset because you don't even have like another gusset on them. Okay. So the first thing that it's going to have us do is from our balance points, which we were just talking about, we're going to connect them all the way down to the wrist. So I don't need this piece of paper. So um, you 
now now you're the designer at this point too so as we work through this you can decide where you want these seams to be the book gives you a good idea on it but some some fitted two piece sleeves have a very skinny underarm piece where this the two seams get really really close and some of them are right even on each side of the wrist and we're going to start with even on each side of the wrist so and we're going to make the bottom of the wrist more fitted so I'm going to start by dividing each side of my wrist just in half oh just in half that'd be a cute name for somebody just in half this is why I can't have kids, because they'll have terrible <laughs> things. I would. All right, so, I'm gonna, so we're going to just divide this out, and because uh, we want to be nice to the people who have to sew it, even if it's you. At this point, you can go ahead and put in a notch or two, so that there's going to only be one way to line this up. Now I want to get rid of two inches across my, my bottom inch. So let's see, if I take away a quarter and a quarter, that's a half, a quarter and a quarter, that's an inch. So on each side of these points, I'm going to take away a quarter of an inch. Now I can take away this quarter. So essentially what we're doing is slashing this and folding it in. Um, so I'm going to just show it that way because it's the easiest way to do it. Um, but if you want to leave a little bit more room for them to do this, if you want to leave a little bit more room across the elbow, in, in a couple spots we're going to take away our wrist just up to the elbow. And then in the other spots we're going to take it the whole way up. So we're kind of splitting the difference. We're going to leave a little room at the elbow, but not a ton. Um, so I'm going to take away on my front, so I have this line for my balance point. On each side of the front, I'm going to take away a quarter, but just up to the elbow, because that's going to become a seam. So I've taken away half an inch. I'm taking out a half an inch there, kind of like deciding the size of a waist. If we were making a corset, we're deciding the size of the wrist. Right. So I've got a half and a half. That's one inch. Now I'm going to take a half right out of the middle. So I'm going to slice all the way up to the cap. So, so we're making the elbow a little more fitted, but not super tight. So now I'm going to just overlap a half of an inch here, like that. And I'm going to tape that down. And then we want to get rid of a half an inch uh, on our underarm seam, which pretty soon we're not going to have an underarm seam. So we got rid of a half and a half, that's an inch. Now I want to get rid of a half an inch from each underarm seam. And I'm going to, I don't want to chop off this curve of my gusset because I feel like I should leave that. So I'm going to take away almost up to the gusset. I'm taking away half there. And this is because we decided that our 11 inch wrist was too big for, for our, we're saying it's a Chanel jacket. We're going to make it a nine inch wrist opening or cuff opening, whatever you want to call it. So we've done that. You know, I can't cut very well. Now these 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 other parts are taking it away just to the elbow. So we've taken away our two inches that we don't want at the bottom, but we left a little bit of room at the elbow, just because I know they're gonna like that. So now I'm gonna free. Uh, I'm gonna cut this into three pieces. So I'm gonna continue cutting all the way up to my balance points in our journey to make our two-piece sleeve. And our two-piece sleeve is going to be a little different steps than the book, but very similar uh, and different because we have a gusset. So I'm going to finish cutting that up to there. Now, I don't want an underarm seam. So did everybody see what I did there? I have my front underside, my back underside, and my over sleeve. I'm going to just take my front to my back and I'm going to sew together with tape my underarm. So, and my gusset is overlapping a ton, but we're going to deal with that here in a second. So we're going to get rid of the underarm seam so we no longer have an underarm seam. Okay, okay, okay. 
now this part where my gusset is overlapping that we don't like, I'm just going to figure out where the overlap starts and cut across it. So we're going to actually increase the gusset here. Because um, if I just tape this overlap down and cut it off, now I've taken away an inch of, I, if I tape this down and cut it off, I've taken away an inch from my sleeve that we need to get around the arm. So, so I'm going to slice across the bottom where my overlap is starting from. And then all I'm going to do is raise up my gussets until they meet. So that I'm going to just bend this until that meets. So all, uh, and I, I've gained a little fabric in my underarm. But what that's doing actually is making the gusset a smidge higher, which is not a bad thing at all. So the next thing we're going to do is put an elbow into this after I finish all my tape and bridges. Jeff Bridges, Tape Bridges. What's my kid's name going to be? Half something? Justin Half. Justin Half, my child, Justin Half. Now, um, we raise the gusset up a tiny little bit, and there's kind of a little bit of point here. It's fine to just put that on the board. And actually, what I should have shown you is that when we first built the gusset on, I should have made a, like a half an inch of a right angle on each side of the underarm seam uh, so that the gusset's really nice and curvy instead of coming up to a point. Now let's put an elbow in this. So, okay, so let's still, let's still look at this more. So now what you can do, if you didn't want an elbow and you don't want to have a hard time putting an opening in the back of your sleeve, you can cut this shape out and you have just a perfectly suitable sleeve. You could tape this front seam together and then you don't have an underarm in the sleeve. You just have a seam down the back of the arm. So if I was making a whole bunch of villagers or something, um, I would just leave a seam down the back of the arm because you could serge it the whole way and then just stop where your opening is and then figure out your cuff. So that's, that's handy. So to put an elbow in, you're going to cut both your front and back straight across your elbow. And I usually put in, for women, like three quarters of an inch of elbow and men for an, in, an inch or an inch and a quarter. I'm going to see what they put in in the book. They put in an inch and a half. Oh, I tipped my water over and onto the book. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> Are we going to short out the internet with the water? I still, I think we're good. We're good. It'll dry up. I don't know where um, paper towel. I'll just use my shirt to kind of dry off. <laughs> you can't see it, but there's water all across the table here. Um, so she, in the book, she puts an inch and a half in. So we're just going to put an inch and a half in, which I think is a little much for a lady, but we're going to say this is for a dude. So all I'm doing is I open my elbow up like that. I open my elbow up, and I'm going to put in an inch and a half space, and then you would fill that in with paper. So does is anybody have any questions about what we just did there? No questions? So then fill this in. So this isn't a dart. You're going to fill that in with paper. No questions? No. Either it's so blurry everybody is black or I'm good, I'm good at swearing. Anybody shopping on Amazon? We can't see where you go when you leave our window, but we know when you leave the window. Right now, 87% of you are paying attention. So that's pretty good. Um, some of you that Some do more that home, do more sewing, home sewing, sewing may have even may encountered have this, where on the elbow, it. on the built-in elbow, you've got a notch here, and then this notch below the elbow, and in some, uh, in a lot of Vogue patterns, in the between these two notches, in the back elbow, they'll even put in, in the over sleeve, they'll put in like an extra half of an inch, and that, that gets eased in. So if you have, um, like a... Well, some of the Chanel jackets don't have a straight sleeve, but um, if you've got a real active a real performer, performer and you put in this, put in this little, little bit of little ease little that you're going to fit gonna in between your notches, it just still, it just gives them a little more room or an across woman. there. Or an active businesswoman, yes, yes, yeah. If she does this a lot, you're chopped. Um, 
The other thing, and I don't know if we talked about this the other day, is when when I measure somebody's elbow, I like to have them put their arm up at a right angle. Um, and maybe we did this in a different class, but I'm going to do it again. Anyway. So when my elbow is up like that, it's 14 inches. But when my elbow is not bent, when it's resting, it's only 12. So if this was for me, this is girl size. If this was for me, I would make sure that at least across this space here, I have at least 14 inches. Otherwise, my person is only going to be able to bend their arm until until whatever measurement you've got there happens. And uh, some dance patterns um, that, that I've done myself uh, for guys will even, from right where the elbow is, will even come and give them like another half an inch on both sides, right to where the elbow is, just so when they've got that girl up above their heads or they're going into battle or whatever they do, uh, they've got plenty of room. So that's something to play with too. Now let's make fun sleeves for 29 minutes. Uh, let's start, let's hand me that little girl. That one. Oh, oh, oh. Boy, I need to loosen it. Um, so let's look at this girl. I can layer that. Let's look at this girl. White on white with a white background. Um, can you see that sleeve if I hold this behind it? Even though you're blurry. So the first sleeve we're going to do is a one-piece sleeve uh, where the front is higher than the back. Uh, and then we're going to put a ruffle around the bottom or a flounce that's shorter in the front and longer in the back. And um, the word for this, I know how to say it, but I don't know how to spell it. So we'll see if anybody knows French real well, is an engagen. And if our costume dictionary wasn't packed away, I could find it. But this is called an engagen sleeve, and it was really popular uh, during Marie Antoinette's time uh, and still shows up in a lot of places. So let me show you first how we're going to make our little sleeve shorter in the front, longer in the back, and just this really basic ruffle. And this sleeve has got just a little bit of gather at the cap. And we're going to do it in miniature. Um, so you want to point your back at the table. I <laughs> tried Googling it. Yeah. It just took me to like a stomach sleeve surgery. Oh, weird. Oh, <laughs> maybe I need a stomach sleeve. I what? think we could do it. I need a stomach sleeve. Shut up. So my little mini sleeves here, um, I just did the, the exact same sleeve that we just did in large, but um, there's, I, I just did it in half size, and this, this mini sleeve doesn't have a gusset. So I'm going to just put my elbow on both of those. There's my shoulder, right? Cut yourself out mini sleeves and play at home. Um, so this first sleeve, uh, is going to be kind of Marie Antoinette sleeve, and I'll show you the drawing too. Do you have the portrait? We're going to do kind of that sleeve, but we're just doing one layer of roughly business instead of two. So shorter in the front, longer in the back, a little bit of gather at the cap. Um, so from what we just did, I'm going to put some some marks on this sleeve. So down the center, look at that, the back's higher. Down the center is my shoulder, and then I'm going to divide the front and back balance points out. So I've got my shoulder to wrist. Oh, I didn't divide it very well. So all right. Got my shoulder to wrist, and then I've got these back points, my back balance point to the wrist, and my front balance point to the wrist. So. Now we're going to make the front of the sleeve higher and the back of the sleeve lower. And actually, on this two-piece sleeve, if you look at a coat, a man's coat that costs a thousand dollars, and then look at a man's sports coat cuff that costs a hundred dollars, you'll see this difference. So I jump around, right? I hope it's not too annoying that I jump around. An expensive coat. It's pretty wet. Um, Gross, the water I spilled. You can't see the water, can you? On an expensive man's coat, the back of the wrist is usually lower three-eighths of an inch or a half an inch. So I'm going to tape the back of my coat together. 
and the front is usually higher, about of an inch or half of an inch. So I just want to show you this too. So I'm going to make the back a little bit lower and the front a little bit higher. And then I'm going to fold all this business together so that my lines connect together in a logical way instead of me just guessing. So what we're looking at here in the origami pile is the front of the wrist. So this, so I'm raising the front of my wrist up. So I'm going to put my curve ruler. Oh, Basil's so tired. The dogs are sleepy. They've been moving. So I raise the front of my wrist up like that, and I'm going to curve that now into the back of my wrist. And then you just kind of keep moving your curve ruler around on to everything that's attractive. So, so now I'm going to cut off a little of the front and add a little bit to the back. So now what you have when this is on your person, you have the front of the actual sleeve is a little bit higher so that you can give a thumbs up or go miss my order and the back is just a little bit longer. And that's just a, a nice difference between an all right pattern and like a nice pattern. And we like nice patterns. So that same principle we're going to use for our Marie Antoinette sleeve. At her elbow though, we're going to make the front higher and the back longer. And I'm going to make it noticeably different. So I'm going to make it the front like three quarters of an inch shorter and the back three quarters of an inch longer. But I'm working in miniature. So I'm going to make my front the eighths of an inch shorter and my back three eighths of an inch longer. And like I just did there, I'm going to fold this together so that I can actually make sure my curve looks good where my seam is because you don't want ugly curves at your seams. No. We, we saw somebody they would have ugly curves at their seams. Her clothes were not big enough. <laughs> and, and we saw a sleeping cop, a cop that guards Brown Emanuel's house was found asleep in his prison. He drove too fast, though, for me to take a Yeah, we tried to get a video, and it didn't work. So what I've done here now is I've raised the front of my sleeve and lowered the back of my sleeve. So that is going to give us the front of her arm will be higher and the back of her arm will be lower and that's pretty. Now we're going to just do like a little basic poof at the top. So I want just a little bit of gather across the top of her sleeve but I don't really want to add a whole bunch to her bicep. I want it to stay kind of hidden. So I'm going to cut across the cap and there's there's lots of different versions of this in the book. You'll, you'll like be like, oh yeah, slash and spread. So I've cut across my cap now I'm going to just cut on either side of my shoulder and all I'm going to do is, is uh, I wish I had two more hands, all I'm going to do is raise the shoulder up. So the higher you make your shoulder, the more you have poof coming up from the body and over the sleeve. And actually let me show you guys this one Rachel did in patterning class. So. This is a house of worth dress. So see if I smash this in, you can see how much poof she has in her sleeve, right? To, when you're adding poof, if you want a really high poof, you see, I was looking at myself. When you want poof, you, it, you actually have to add a lot more than you think. Because if I want this, her stands up like an inch and a half in miniature. So you have to remember that not only do you need poof going up, you need to add the poof going back down. So on her, I was almost going to draw on this. So her original sleeve cap was only this tall. That's where the shoulder is. So to get that much poof in in miniature, that's actually about like four inches. So if this was a real size pattern, to get just that, that much poof, you have to add eight inches because you have to think the poof is coming up, going back down, and then you have your sleeve. I'm so dramatic. Um, but for our little Marie Antoinette sleeve, we're going to add a little bit of poof. So I'm going to just raise the center part of my sleeve up 
an inch, so I'll have like a half inch poof. And I'm going to tape that down. Now, all I'm going to do is angle this other part of my sleeve until it looks like I can connect up to the shoulder with a nice curved line. So, so right, we have this gap here, which is, which is what we've added actually to the cap. So this amount of extra is actually happening up at our cap. So do, does that make sense, what I just did there to everybody, kind of? So we've added a little bit of poof at the top of the sleeve, but not a ton, just a little bit. And then obviously tape in more paper. So now we've got a little bit of poof in the cap. Now let's talk about that roughly thing. Um, nobody found the spelling of Angushan. Once, once we unpack the boxes at the new shop next week, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna tell you how to spell it. I don't even have a guess on how to spell. Some books call that a pagoda sleeve too, especially when there's like three three ruffles. So to make this cute ruffle, it's just a circle, um, but the center of the circle is offset, so it's kind of like making a high low skirt for her sleeve. So we're going to cut a big circle, and then we're just going to offset the hole so that we can have the front of her ruffle be shorter than the back. And the larger you make the hole in the middle of your circle, the middle of your donut, the more gathers you have. So you can either make this fit exactly to the bottom of your sleeve, you can make this edge fitted, or if you make the hole of this circle we're going to do bigger, then you actually have to gather it onto your, uh, the bottom of your sleeve, the elbow of your sleeve. So I'm going to just make this really quick and dirty. Um, oh, does this, the white show up? I should do this in paper. Uh, there, that shows up better. So the idea behind making that kind of a sleeve treatment is you're just going to take a circle. And I'm going to make a quickie circle just by starting off like I'm making a snow point. Have my circle is kind of a circle. So if you just make a circle like that, if we put the hole right in the middle, we're going to have the same amount of fluff the whole way around, but we want this to look more expensive. So now I'm going to take my circle and I'm going to refold it so that my next hole is closer to an edge. Ha 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 ha. So you can also say this is a pattern for a high low dress if you want. So now if I recut my hole, there. So now, here's what we've ended up with. This is the front of our arm, and this is the back of our arm. And so now when this is gathered on to this, when that's gathered on to that, so the high point in the front is going to be your short, your shortest part of your ruffle for your flounce, and the longest part of your elbow is going to be the longest part of your flounce. And that's when you end up with this. Ha ha. So you could make multiple rows of this. You could just make ruffle on top of ruffle, and you could make all the fronts hit at the same point, and the backs each get longer. You could make them evenly longer. You can do all kinds of stuff. Fun. And then there's are the little bit of fullness that we added into the cap. Next sleeve. Okay. Huh? Huh? Excited? Kendra in Baltimore, are you listening? She's attentive. Kendra's attentive. Good. Mouth to me who is oh we went oh mouth to me who isn't watching it all. <laughs> Somebody is shopping in another window. Or they're just gonna wait for the clear recording. <laughs> as soon as I said that it went back. <laughs> That's funny. You know we're watching you. I'm just cleaning up my table before we look at this next sleeve. Okay, so this next sleeve is this is this fella right here. This kind of bishopy sleeve. Hello. And it's so pretty. And and this is kind of Victorian going into Edwardian, but it shows up a lot of different times. It's even kind of popular now with some stuff. So what it has is a whole lot of fullness at the cuff. And um here point it up at here. And you can see, if you look at her sideways, that the back of the sleeve has 
much more uh, fullness and much more length coming out of the cuff than the front. So we're keeping the front of our sleeve kind of short and making the back for it. And that, what's interesting is that actually kind of makes the sleeve hang like it has an elbow just by lengthening the back. Um, and I'll show you my little research picture. Um, the dogs are playing. So here's here's kind of the sleeve we're doing. This one's a little more fitted, but what we're looking at is is how do you get that extra bit uh, at the back of the cup and how to make a simple cup. So that's what I'm showing you next. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with my little micro sleeve. I'm going to find my shoulder and my other balance points. And I'm going to start by marking them in. Eventually, we only want to make a whole book of just cute little miniature sleeves so people can see all the different ways you can slice this up to make stuff. One summer at the Omaha Playhouse, they paid me for three months to make sleeves from history. And that was it. It was awesome. Your dream job. It was my dream job. <laughs> make historical sleeves um, in like 20 different sizes each. So let's make a cup. So uh, we're saying that my, my imaginary lady has a 7 inch wrist. So in my miniature, I want this to only be, <laughs> the doctor's so funny. Um, uh, I want this to only be an, uh, three and a half inches across. So my seven inch wrist uh, in miniature is three and a half. So I've got all this extra that I need to get rid of first. So uh, similar to what we did earlier, I'm going to actually start by folding my, folding my, oh, they're really plain. Sorry, the dogs are being cute. They've hated each other all day long. So just like we did with the two-piece sleeve a little bit ago, I'm going to just overlap a few of these spots evenly. I'm overlapping the same amount until I have my wrist that's the size I want. So there's my three-and-a-half-inch wrist. And I'm going to just kind of tape it down. The dogs are going Basil's crazy. Never Basil's never having fun. Um, I need a new piece of paper. So all I did was just fold in my balance point lines and my center line until I got the wrist width that I want. Now I'm going to trace that onto a piece of paper. So brown on brown, how great is that? And I'm going to say I want my cuff in real size to be three inches. So I'm going to make my cuff in miniature an inch and a half. And I know this is my back balance point line that I overlapped. So I'm going to mark also right now where the opening in my sleeve is going to be. So this line that I just hammered on there is going to be the opening. And there's other ways to make cuffs too, but this shows the, the idea behind it really clear. You can skip it and just start with a cuff. But what this cuff has got is a bit of a curve. When we folded that in, we ended up with this nice curve at the bottom instead of a straight line. And my three inch cuff, I'm going to start with an inch and a half. This one. Because I'm working in miniature. Hopefully, this miniature stuff hasn't thrown in. So now I have the top of my cup, and this is where I want to be open, this little dashed line, my open line. So I'm going to cut out my cuff. So the cuff doesn't need an underarm seam, right? So in a moment, we're going to get rid of the underarm seam. But before I get rid of the underarm seam in my cuff, so opening of my cuff, opening of my sleeve, I want to put a couple notches on here so that when I have my gather of palooza, I know what the heck I'm matching up. So I put two single notches in a double notch. So there'll only be one way to put this together. Now on my cuff, where the opening is, I'm going to cut my opening. Then I'm going to just take and with tape sew my underarm together. Ah, magic, right? But by putting the notches on it already, I know, I know, no, know that it's going to fit right. Okay, so we've got our little tiny cup, which no longer coordinates with that until we sew the cup together. Okay, now to get this bump out at the bottom, we're going to add a whole bunch of length at the back of our sleeve 
and not a whole bunch in front. So I'm going to, so we've got our cuff, which we found out by folding some of our sleeve together. Now the cuff, uh, when we put the cuff on the bottom of this, it pushes the sleeve up already. So that gives us puff out. Um, so, so this, when we put the cuff on the bottom now, so our cuff is patterned up to here. When we put the cuff down at the bottom and put it back on her arm, that gives us poof, which in this sleeve is at the bottom. So um, I'm going to mark the front of my cuff where we have no poof. So this spot from here, if my cuff is so near, I have no poof. Here I have a ton of poof. So I'm going to do kind of like what we did with the Marie Antoinette sleeve. And I'm going to just kind of mark really drastically this big piece of poof at the bottom because the next thing we're going to do is spread this out and the poof isn't going to seem so drastic. So now to get that really full bottom of the sleeve, this thing that we split up earlier, now all we're going to do is span it out. Let me move some stuff so you can actually maybe see what I'm doing. So now does that kind of make sense? So we're adding poof at the bottom. So if I want to make my life even easier, I can slice this again and again um, so that I have more things to spread out evenlier. And the more, like don't go crazy like some people slice like every half of an inch, that's too much. That's overkill. Um, but if you put a couple more slices in this, it makes connecting this curve uh, easier. Now, if I want to put a little gather in the top, but not necessarily height, or hiccup. If I want to put gathers in the top, but not height up and down, all I'm going to do is spread out the top a little bit, but I'm not raising anything up. So I'm going to spread out my top a little and my bottom more. And then we don't want gathers under her armpit, probably. We just are going to assume that. So what I'm going to do, this is my armpit and this is my armpit. Where in the cap here, I put gap at the cap and more at the cuff, like dramatically more at the cuff. In the underarm, in the armpit, I want to slice that up, but I'm not going to separate the top. So I'm still putting fullness at her wrist, but I'm leaving it fitted in her armpit. Did that kind of make sense? Everybody's going to make mini sleeves or full size sleeves. So same thing back here. I want fullness at her wrist, but I don't want her armpit to be gathered. So just the part that's under her arm, I'm going to leave that touching. I'm not adding a thing there. And then we just make a big tape bridge. I'm going to just pick this up and throw it away. But now on here, we still have our opening marked, right? So right here will be where we put a fine placket in. Then we will sew the underarm together. And we made these notches earlier that our wrist will match to. And actually, one of them is here in outer space. But so now when we put our cuff on, there's only one way for our cuff to fit. And the opening of the cuff will now match the opening that we're sewing in our sleeve. Amazing stuff. So that's that's this sleeve that we just did. And so darling, now let's look at this next sleeve, which is a little more going on, but it's all the same thing. It's all the same, it's all the same steps. So let me throw away this sleeve. Sleeves are like one of my favorite things. Let's see. Here it is. It's hiding. Here's our next sleeve, a little more advanced. But it's the same thing going on. And let me show you my reference for this sleeve. This is just, you know, the kind of dress that you take a walk in and play croquet. So what she's got going on here is puff which is similar to the one we just did. She has poof in her sleeve. And a part of her poof is sheared or gathered, so it's gathered 
um, around her bicep or her underarm and it's gathered into the cap and then she's got this fitted sleeve underneath. So we're going to start with a fitted sleeve. So under this whole thing, this sleeve here runs all the way up to her shoulder and it's what's holding all of this fun volume together. This fitted sleeve has this stuff sewn onto it and this to the shoulder is all one piece. It's just gathered across the bicep. Um, and I wanted to continue with uh, being nice and making interesting shapes that are pleasing. So you can also see that the front side of this does not stick out as much and isn't as full as the back. I purposely made the back stick out more and the front a little bit less so that when she's swinging her croquet mallet, she, you know, it's not up in her face. Pushing her shopping cart. Yeah, when she's, when she's <laughs> pushing her shopping cart at Target, she can reach, um, you know, stuff on <laughs> shelves. <laughs> <laughs> the first product I thought of, I couldn't say out loud, and it's not even bad. But... So let's look at what? this sleeve. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'll tell you later. Yeah, I don't know why it's the first thing that popped into my head. Okay, so we've got the same kind of thing that we're starting with. Your pointer down at the table. Um, so we have the same block that we're starting with, and I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to make it fit her wrist. So time saving I'm not going to measure as much. So what I need to do first is make the sleeve that fits her wrist. So I'm slicing in to get my under sleeve. So I've got my sleeve now that fits her wrist. The next thing I need to decide is where does all this glorious volume start and I'm going to say it's about at her elbow. So I'm going to do similar to what we've done earlier. I'm going to make the front of it a smidge high and the back a little low. So the part below this line is going to stay flat. And actually this whole sleeve is going to go all the way up to her shoulder. This is our inside sleeve. But the bottom part of this is going to show. That's our fitted part of the sleeve. So what I'm going to do next is retrace the part that we're going to slash and spread. So I'm going to retrace the poofy part of her sleeve. And it's, it's just going to go from the elbow up, so that's all I'm really interested in. But I want to mark uh, my different balance points and stuff also. I want to know where the shoulder is. So I'm drawing where it's going to fit to the under sleeve. This stuff is so much fun. Okay. Then I'm going to give myself a single notch in the front and two notches in the back so that when, when whoever the victim is that has to sew this together, they've got something to align up. Okay, so this is going to become our big poofy section. Oh, we're about done. We'll go like two or three minutes over, but we're about done. So start thinking of your last couple questions. Go ahead and type them in. Yeah, yeah. So right, so right now, if I put this onto our girl, there's nothing. Um, it's not long enough at all. So if I'm going to kind of imagine how much I want to poop out, and I'm going to double that. So if I want this to stick out two inches in the back, I'm going to add four inches of length so that it can kind of go out. And, and that's one of those things that, like, the more and more you do it, you'll kind of start to have a feel for what you're what you're really doing. So um, I'm in miniature, so I'm not going to add four inches. I'm going to just add two. So I'm going to actually tape this back onto another piece of paper. And below the back, so this two notches is my back, I'm going to make that much longer. My front, I'm going to make a little less longer. And my sides, I'm going to make the same, the same length. So all this that I've added now, that becomes poof. And I actually, I want to mark this line too of where the shearing is. So I'm, I'm also marking where the shearing is uh, at her armpit or bicep. Just another day cutting that paper. Woo! Okay, so now to get the shearing in, I've got to split this whole cap 
all the way down to the bottom. So now, when I start splitting this up, and when you first start doing this, you can even write like A, B, C, D, E, F, G on your splits uh, so that you know where stuff is going. I, got, I didn't tape it. I want to So now, and this is explained in the directions to this slash and spread business. So now, if I just fan this out similar to some of the other stuff we did, um, that will make that sleep. So then I'm going to, and I, if you want to gourmet it up, you can fan the back out more than you fan the front out so that there's more gathers and more fullness in the back. So this edge now, sewn to here, makes this sleeve. How cool is that? And the sharing at the top. So you would also gather this line at the cap. So really, if you just start looking at stuff, and if you just break it down into pieces, it's patterning will be, I'm looking in the mirror, the mirror blue version. Um, you just, this stuff that looks like an overwhelming thing to pattern, usually if you just separate it out into its parts and deal with it one part at a time, you might trace your sleeve three times, but you can make all this really elaborate stuff. Um, and it all relates to what we started with the first day with the boss. Yeah. Do you have a question? Yeah, question time. I'll face the camera. Unless we need to look down here. I'll face Hello. The camera. Hi. Um, what about a Juliet type sleeve that has a poof at the elbow? Oh, okay. So if you're making a poof at an elbow, um, like rows of poofs going down, is that what you mean? Like, like a tight and a poof at the shoulder. Yeah. So I'll just draw a couple different things. Does this show? So it's all it's all the same kind of thing. All the dogs are barking at somebody hanging out the wall. So if you, I know he was doing it so gross. So you got a sleeve, right? So if you want a sleeve that's like this, where the top and bottom are pooped, right? If you want that sleeve, you you start with your sleeve, right? Oh, that's terrible. You start with your sleeve. And you mark where the poop is going to get sewn on, right? And you take this part off, and you make you slash and spread it until it's bigger. But to get the poof coming out from the bottom, you actually have to make the bottom of your sleeve dip down like that. Does that does that make sense? So to get poof up here and down here, I'm going to spread this. I'm spreading this apart to there. And if you want the underarm to stay flat, don't add any any length to the underarm, but add length to where you want the poop is. So then if you want to just continue this down, you just keep tracing that section of the sleeve. Am I even showing it? Yeah. yeah. You just keep tracing that section of the sleeve. So instead of this, so instead of this, now you add your poof there and your poof there, and then spread it out. Okay, did that answer that question? You can just you can just go to town with this same thing. And if you want poof under the underarm, add length to the underarm. But generally, you keep this edge flat. Yes, she said. Woohoo! And that's in the book too. So if you don't have the book yet, so so you could even do this sleeve like that and just put a cuff on it. So the more height you add, the more poop up, up and down you get. And as long as your underarm isn't long, the cuff will stay where you want, and that makes the poop. Um, pretty good at drawing with no back. Regarding your other sleeve you were working out before, yeah, does that outer poop get sewn to the under sleeve at the elbow? This sleeve? I believe that's not Yeah. So, so I marked on my fitted sleeve where this is sewn. So first you're going to sew that, you're going to sew your fitted sleeve together first, then you're going to put the underarm and this oversleeve together, then you're going to gather the bottom of your oversleeve to your undersleeve, fold that up, then gather your sheared part on, 
hook that down and then gather your sheared cartilage. Should I say sheared? Yes, I thought sheared. I said something else. <laughs> then gather your sheared part to your undercap. Then this cap will even have a little bit of gathers going into the bodice. And if, when you're making big stuff like this, consider flat lining it with like a couple layers of heavy net or taffeta or something. You can even on an inside sleeve, we do this pretty often, where on our inside sleeve, we'll put a couple rows of net ruffles where we want the poof to happen so that when somebody bashes into your party mom on stage, her sleeve doesn't deflate and it'll pop back out. That's and it? Okay. I made a man's body block. The shoulders were big. Everything else was great. Is that normal? Check your measurement. It's pretty muscular. Is that why? Would you adjust the bodice with darts in the sleeve at the shoulder or change something else? Uh, fit it and use your design eye to make uh, uh, an informed uh, decision. That's my answer for that. Any other questions? But yes, yeah, so you made something and sewed it together. That's fabulous. Um, you just have to make a hundred more and keep fitting things. Any other questions? Can message our page if you think of anything later. Yes, and we're pretty sure that the video saved on a computer should be better. Yeah. But it's weird that some people had a hard viewing and some didn't. But I think it's the weather we have. And we'll give you the other copy of this when we do it the next time. That's it. <gasps> Thank you, everybody. Have a good weekend. Or it might be the last day of the weekend already. I don't know. Like six hours, it's all shut down. <laughs> I think that's it. So, is the video already saved on that one? We have to.